Kia ora koutou, hello everybody and welcome to Epic Aotearoa Create a Better Future podcast with your hosts Joe Hortai and Brian Osman, who have the privilege to connect with and share the lived experiences of imperfect but inspiring people from all walks of life. We thank you for spending some time with us today and hope you find value in the messages shared. Join us in doing your bit to create a better future. As Abraham Lincoln said, the best way to predict the future is to create it. Let's create a good one. Let's go. You know, just remind him to take care of the ball. Um, mm. you know, and remind him about what are the pressure release situations where he can, where he doesn't have to handle the ball all the time. Yeah. Um, and those, what are what are what are other options? How can we do things differently? How can you man- manage to take care of the ball, but at the same time not turn it over? So, it's empowering them to make the decisions and have the autonomy to do that on the floor. So nice, I like that, yeah. Coach. I was yeah, going to yeah. ask you as well. How do you and what do you? look for because uh, i assume you have your you have your style you have mm-hmm. your philosophies in terms of how you want the game to be played what do you look for from your players because i think i saw and read in one of the articles earlier this year you had recruited five new players i think three forwards mm-hmm. and a couple of guards what is it that you look for as a coach and the qualities that you think are going to fit in well with your vision for your team yeah i think mm-hmm. the first thing is the character mm-hmm. i said this year all our guys have to be about character um, really important. It's, it, it supports our philosophy, our organisational philosophy, which is about being good people. We've got to have good character. Um, that's the first thing. And the guys we've got yet, the, the five that we have signed, signed six, yes, five, six guys. There's, six. Uh, one is a veteran who's still playing. Well, he's a veteran, but he's 20, 27, 28. Uh-huh. Uh, and he's playing in Norway at the moment. And he knows the business of playing as an official. He's yep. good with that. But it's we, we've signed these five guys because we feel like as part of our strategic plan, three are due to tall blacks, that they feature in that in the next three years. It's not looking at where they are now, yep. it's looking at where they could be in three years' time. Yep. Mm. And, and part of our strategic plan and being competitive in three years' time. Yeah. So it's looking at those guys and saying, okay, what do they bring to the table? You know, they're the elite level guys. You know, two of them don't want to go to college. They don't want to go to the US. They've had the office to go to the States. Yeah. They want to stay here and they want to start their professional career here. Wow. So, which is really, 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 it's it's refreshing. It's, you know, mm. we're always talking about a pathway, a pathway, you can go to the States, get college, you can go to Europe. Now they want to start their pathway here. Nice. So it's understanding that. And, and for me, it was beating their parents. Yeah. Yeah, I needed to get a feel for who their parents were what was important then. So I had conversations with the parents. Awesome. Um, one of them is a Samoan lad, um, and he's he's from Auckland, but was playing for the Nuggets last year. He's with us this year. Um, and it was interesting because I said, you know, so he knew I was Samoan. And then he rang me back and he said, oh, coach, uh, my grandfather would like to talk with you. <laughs> um, so I said, yeah, absolutely. Give him to call me. So, you know, his grandfather rang me and, uh, you know, it was quite interesting because we had a good conversation in our language, Samoan, and we had a really good chat about some, you know, culture where uh, his, where his grandson is, and he was really pleased that his grandson was, you know, going somewhere that there was a, you know, Samoan Samo. connection. Yeah. Um, nice. You know, and that was it. I just said, look, we said to his grandfather, we're all about family. We're all about getting good people, and we know that he's come from a good family, and. Um, those are really you know, part and parcel. Is we need character guys. Yep. What are they about? What are they far know about? What is their values about? That all yes. aligns with our organisational values. Um, and that's really important. That's integrity. You know, good people, um, respect and trust. Uh, mm. Really important. Um, and you can see the elements of their families and parents in in the act. Mm. We can see that. Mm. We know they're respectful. A um, you know, couple of the guys, the seven brothers, they're from Wellington. Um, one of them spent a Mormon, his Mormon mission in Samoa uh, for two years, and he came back. And you know, 
He's, he's learned a little bit of the Samoan language. And, you know, <laughs> every time he comes to practice, we have a little korero in Samoan. <laughs> and, uh, it's really refreshing, you know, just having him speak, speak like that to me. Mm. He comes in and everyone's like looking at him, <laughs> looking at me. And, we check away. <laughs> and he's molding, yeah, you know, and, he, and he really yeah, that's enjoys awesome. the fact that, you know, we can, as players, we come in, and I'm talking about that, their day. Hey, how'd your day go? You know, how was the studies at uni? And, and we're talking about how was the ride up here? You know, those sorts of things and so the character was really important we had to get mm. that right the ownership wow. the owner and the the, the 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 company is all about that yep. and all about getting good people they're talented basketball players yep. Yep. they're talented in basketball in their field but they're also good good people character people and for me their parents felt like their kids are in good hands because mm. we all believe in the same mm. values you know I'm not a religious guy, I, yep. you know, I'm not into religion, but however, I do believe some of the values that those boys have linked through the church and their beliefs, yep. are, are they all trans, they're transferable to them, this, 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 this sport, yeah. the sport environment, they're really important, and that's important for our group. Beautiful. Um, and, they, and they offer a lot of respect. Um, we've got a good cultural aspect because Tia Frost, who's our assistant coach, He's, uh, he works at Manakura School here in Palmerston North, so it's Māori, fully Māori immersed. I it. And yeah, one of our athletes we've signed, he's a young man who speaks Kōrero Māori and was really refreshing last week when we were going through our team stuff on the floor. And he just broke it down in Māori. Mm, and I, I, was, I stood there thinking, man, this is gold. This is, That's awesome. this yeah. is gold. If we're, we're as coaches and you know in my space of education we're searching for the hook to try and get the players to understand this is gold yeah. this is magic you know i've never seen that but i was i said to tia i want you to continue to do that that's really important for us we're creating this environment for learning and support and it's a cultural connection as well beautiful we've got that through through tia we've got it through me and yeah. all of our things have done in, in a way that we make the players feel like they're in a family environment. Yeah. And they feel mm. like they can talk to us at any point in time. The fact that they're really good basketballers, we can work on that part of it. But the key thing for us is we needed character guys. Um, the last thing we need is, you know, when I've looked at certain teams in the past and issues they've had off the floor, that stems from, you know, having not having consistent leadership Yep. So we've got consistent leadership in the government space um, with our junior manager, with our coaching staff, um, and also looking at a consistent leadership group with with the players. Um, awesome. So that that's that's the, the key area, you know, mm. that we have. Um, we're encouraging players to also question. A lot. I, you know, I'm about players asking questions yeah. and, and talking to the assistant coaches. You know, the last two weeks we've we've thrown film up on our group chat. And I've said to coach players, look, if you've got any concerns, you know, <coughs> don't feel uh, whakama or ashamed mm. to talk to the mm. assistant coaches or myself. You know, just just do that. This is part of us all growing together, mm. you know, and learning things together. So you know, you know, we've we've established some processes where we've got the players um, completing some some questionnaires around their own. Uh, assess individual assessment in their, the way they play so that we can get a snapshot of their perception of where they're at and then we can we can look at that and then we can say hey we come together as a coaching staff and the player and we talk about that and we we say well, this is where we feel where you're at and we talk about what are ways we can help you get to where you want to be but also we, we talk to them about ways we feel that they can help themselves yeah, when they're nice. around us as a group and when they're alone and help, when they're not at training and things that it can help them as well. So it's not just about us, here's what we want, but we, we want this, but we want you to be part of the journey. So part of that is staying engaged with our athletes and this is all transparent. We're saying to them, we feel this is where you're at. For you to get to here, we need you to do these things. And what is it that you see from your side mm. that you need to do more of or more of less? That, that you, you, mm. you believe. And we, we do this all with an assistant coach and myself together. Never one of us alone. We just yep. do it with assistant coach, so everything's transparent. Um, but that, that's, that's it in a nutshell, really. If, if players 
that's what we're looking for in our group. That's who we look for. You know, we've we've seen. You know, we've been training for four or five weeks. We we've seen the players. We yeah. know we've got a good idea of where they're at and what sort of areas they need to work on in terms of their own self management and how they approach practice, um, their personality and character on the floor. Like some of them, one of them's outspoken. I said that's great to be outspoken, but it's about you know, when can you be outspoken mm. and what yep. times to mm. practice. And, and how much you say to other players, you know, yeah. you've got to think about the, what that, the effect of that on another player in your team. And then there's ways you can do that more subtly off the floor when you can have a good chat to your teammate. Um, those are good conversations to have. Yeah. Uh, we do select our part and parcel, part, part of our planning is a selecting our 15 next Tuesday. Mm. Once we do that, we will take the group away for a retreat. It's mm-hmm. in two weeks' time where we take all of them away. Um, I'm working on the workshop elements of that retreat, which involves establishing what our culture looks like, what are our standards, what are our expectations as a group, um, get to know the players in a deeper, at a deeper, deeper level. level. Yeah. Um, what, are some, what are some of the areas of support outside the normal skills, mental training, um, strength and conditioning, basketball elements. Now we're looking at areas of well-being and support. What is it that you need mm. for us to help you um, prepare? You know, get a, it, it is getting a little bit more deeper yep. into an area where players may feel uncomfortable, but we're going to create the environment so they can feel being uncomfortable. We mm. want them to be comfortable with feeling uncomfortable, so to speak. Yep. Mm, yep. So creating mm. that environment where they're open to talk to us, bringing some workshop speakers in who are key speakers who can help us facilitate that nice. and help us get to the bottom of what players are thinking. Mm. And if they have any issues outside of that, we can help support them. You know, I'm saying to players, if you've got personal issues, that's great. If you can't make it to players to practice, because you have a personal issue, then just let me know. Let us know. And, mm. and I'm understanding. I'm understanding if you've got personal issues in your lives. But the other thing is we've engaged a team chaplain. So I think that's really important. Nice. We've got a team chaplain yep. that comes from all of our trainings. And whenever you know we've had players out with COVID, Willie's on top of that. I, he's there, he knows which players are out. So he, he connects with them and says, how can we support you in any way? Is there anything you need? Those sort of things. Mm-hmm. Um, even when we know that there is, you know, players at a counsellor, we're happy to. We we need to know who that is so that yep. if we see any changes in behaviour, we can say, hey, look, give the counsellor rings that we see some changes in behaviour. It's an opportunity for you to talk to him because uh, <clears throat> we don't want to delve too deep into his. We want him to be comfortable that we're fully supportive. Supporting, of yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, beautiful. That's, and it sounds like. Those are incredible things that you've got going on, Coach. Yeah. It sounds like you must do, I'm guessing, the same thing with identifying who your coaching staff's going to be. Yep. But for them and for each other, I love how the transparency yeah. and the character and those open conversations and stuff happen. Yeah. Do you apply, I'm guessing, similar things to help develop your assistant coaches and that, that leadership team, which is which is great to hear. You've got that consistency, but I... I'm guessing, and it sounds like that's that's going to be a staple and a consistent theme, not only with your players, but they'll see that with your leadership. Would that be fair? Yeah, a- absolutely, 100%. Mm. Um, you know, I spent a good month, month and a half, talking to the lead coaches in the region um, and thinking who would be the two assistant coaches for mm. me this year. Um, one of the things I, I realised was I talked to you about unneeded coaches yeah, you could tell. You could say, oh, yes, "This is what I think." Yep. Um, and both of those guys are—they're both embedded in this community. You know, they've both played for the Jets. They're both coaching now. They're in the mm. representative program. One's in the representative program. One works with Manukura Basketball. Um, they're well known in the community. They've been coaching a few years now. And for me, it was about, you know identifying those two and again it comes back to character i know matt yes. he's a character guy and i know tia and i know tia's father really well mm-hmm. him and i joe frost and you might remember him right yep. yeah joe I do. frost um a legend in coaching in the manawatu 
his sons continued his dad's legacy by coaching as well. Um, and oh. there's similarities with their coaching that I really like. You know, Tia is a yeah. really uh, intense guy, and I like that about him. But, and I like the fact that, again, character guys, they, I know their families well. We continue, We talked for a while before I uh, announced to the to the um, board and, and the organisation that they would be my assistant coaches. We haven't media. We haven't released it through the media, but I'm, I'm um, talking to you guys yeah. about these guys now. But how <laughs> here we yes. go. Yes, this is a scoop. We got the scoop. We got the scoop. Yep. Um, that seemed to, to happen, but you know, that's awesome. Me, again, it was character. But to me, again, it's what I can offer those two. Mm-hmm. So when I initially talked to the board, I said, look, these two guys, young coaches, both in their 30s, Matt's in his late 30s, Tia's in his early 30s, uh, both been coaching in the junior space, both understand the game. Um, and for me as a head coach, it's more what I can do for them than what they can do for me. So mm-hmm. me, it's about providing them with development. As awesome, well. yeah. Um, mm. At the end of the day, I said to the board, when I leave, whenever it is, when I finish up here, if it's in five or six years, seven years, I left two guys who are capable of taking over this franchise, mm. who have the skills to take over and become a right. coach. One yeah. of these two guys will be one of the guys, I believe, that could take over the franchise. And that, 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 that's important because, one, they're both from Manawatu. Mm. I'm not from the Manawatu and I know I've come here and a lot of people don't know me and I don't know like too many people in the Manawatu but I know that you know at the end of the day when I finish here I want to make sure that there's someone who's capable of taking over the head coach role here and Beautiful. that might be in five or six years that's the legacy I'll leave here mm. is to develop these two young aspiring coaches who've got good basketball wow. minds and who are open to learning um, and who, who, who are vulnerable as well to open mm. to learning, have that growth mindset, um, and are really good at flicking questions to me during the day. Coach, what do you think? You know, love that about them. And we're all, and you know the first you know the first um, week we were here, I invited the both over to to have dinner at my place. Um, had their families come with them too. We met Tia's wife, really lovely person, lovely family, and I knew that would that be the case. And I guess. As a person, you just have a good feel about people. Well, I, I've got a good mm. feel mm. and I judge a character, and I yep. just felt like these are the two right guys. Awesome. Now, they don't, they, they, they have the game at heart. That's yep. really important. Cool. They just focus on the game at heart and the athlete at heart. It's not about them. It's not about what they can, what what they aspire to be, and they they don't have egos. And that's really important. They they're here to learn. And that's what's, you know, led me to, to, to appoint them as our assistant coaches. And in the four weeks we've been going, wow. they've, been, you know, they've been phenomenal. You know, I couldn't have asked for two better assistant coaches who have got their finger on the pulse, who are willing to do more than just what what what, what is expected of them. Yep. And I'm really enjoying the time that we, we spend together, um, which is really important. The board is fully supportive of those guys. and. That's what I like. Um, you know, we've got good relationships. I've got a good relationship with my team, staff, and and that's that's a that's a positive. Fantastic yeah. to hear. How many? Sorry, coach, I forgot to ask as well. How many players all up in your team? So you said you're going to select fifteen. Is that fifteen yeah, from twenty or thirty or? It's fifteen from nineteen. Wow. Okay. So, so we'll, we'll cut four guys next Tuesday. And it's right. It's disappointing. Yeah. Um, yeah. But we've got to refine our our squad yep. so that we can really focus on those little bits and pieces before you know we have potentially five weeks. Yeah. Going into our first game. And um, sorry, okay, that's how. And then how does that? What process do you go through with? Because I would assume it's pretty hard, eh? and and the players that you have to cut would take that pretty hard. How does that affect you, if if at all, and or how do you sort of manage that when you're having those? I would assume difficult conversations to to break the news to the players. Yeah, I I, I, I don't do it alone. Yeah. So again, I said the side coaching staff will be with me when we we make that. I mean, we, we sit down as a group mm-hmm. and we talk about the players. You know, I have the last say, but generally we've been, assistant coaches have been spot on with, I yep. don't think there'll be too many issues 
on who the 15 will be. Yep. The challenge for us, I said, is how do we frame the information mm. for those that don't make the 15? Yep. And I guess some mm. of them are young. We can identify areas of development in the game and skills. Mm. Um, one of the things that we, you know, with that group, we say, look, there could be opportunities that you can come back in and train if injuries come out. Yep. We get injuries during true. the year. Yeah, true. Um, but again, it's, it's about saying to them, here are the key areas that you need support in. Mm. Um, unfortunately, you know, we'd love to have you as part of the 15. We, we'd love to continue with the 19, but we've got to get it to 15. And then we, we were open and honest about why, why we've selected it. Yep. You have to be. It's a hard conversation to have. But if, mm. if we're not open and honest about um, providing that feedback, player feedback, player review, then we're doing the player a disservice. Yeah. Yeah. So we've got to be, yeah. we're doing the player, we have an obligation, a duty to, to be upfront and honest mm -hmm. about all the areas of concern for us or the areas of development. There are areas of development. Areas of development. Yeah. So we're saying, you know, most of these guys are young. We're saying that's not going to, you know, you, you could go away and, and spend a year training hard, yeah. getting your body in the right shape and come back to trials next year and you've done exactly what we've said. And, you know, we, we're a believer of that. You know, I believe that, like I said, athletes have different entry points. Mm. And for athletes, we don't give up on an athlete, you know, who's 21 or 22. They, If we give them time to develop and they work on those things, yep. we don't know. Something might just click for them mm. in a year's time. And they come back and we're like, wow, this guy's really worked on his skills or he's a lot more confident in what he does. Um, he's better at, you know, Communicating yep. you know, the areas that we're really looking for, you know, is 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 other one areas we want. So it's really important to be upfront and honest. That's, oh. that's the way I've approached things. It's, it's nice. it clear. It's clear. It's transparent. If we have an assistant coach in the room, then there's three of us in that conversation. If there's four of us with the two assistants, then it's open and honest. We're aware of what there is, and then we document that and provide that for them as well. I love that because that's yeah. that gives that just in and of itself gives a heck of a lot mm -hmm. of hope even for people that might listen to this that go through different yeah. different challenges this doesn't just have to yeah. be for basketball mm. but particularly for basketball because both Brian and I love it and you obviously mm. do but for players to hear that and have an understanding of that especially when they're going to get that feedback and information that's going to help them with the intent coming from a really good place to help them develop yeah. and grow they would hopefully, I would assume, take that and go fire out. This is what they reckon I need to do. I'm going to go away and mm -hmm. smash that. I'll come back next year. So thanks for yeah. sharing that. Yeah. I think that's really yeah. beautiful for people to hear. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 um, that actually reminds me, and, and I would love to have been in that space and or, or yeah, and then how to manage players because it feels like that's so supportive that it, it, the player would probably most likely want to come back mm -hmm. and work on that, you know. And I, I do recall um, a couple of moments, actually, a lot earlier when I was coaching and then when my son started to play, well, when I was coaching, when I would do that call, I don't think I gave that feedback, right? So then you have this fallout and then you have people that perhaps drop away from the game. But I didn't understand that, didn't understand why that is and the people management. It was all about... I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to run a motion. <laughs> Do I need people to run a motion? It was so focused on the tactical, it wasn't focused on the person itself. Mm -hmm. And I do recall um, uh, my son trying out for um, um, uh, an age grade team. He was he was a, he was a younger than the the age grade than most of the players, but when he got cut, which was um, which was coming, you could see it. The head coach, who is relatively well, he is well known. Um, basically said to me, had the conversation with me saying, I don't like to do this. Can you do this? <laughs> I was like, oh. you know, it's like, that's not the way to do it. Approach it. Uh, but yeah. So this is really refreshing to hear because mm. um, I think like, and I, I'm sure Joe, you'd you agree. A lot of the pods that we've had more recently, some of the messages that you're sharing are, are resonating with some of the experiences we've, we've had on yeah. in the most recent podcast. 100%. There's a, um, I hope you don't mind, Coach. Um, yeah. I've got a couple other questions. If yeah, you've sure. you got the time. Yep, okay, yep. cool. Um, there's one thing that I actually wanted to, to ask you, and just, again, it's probably going back a little bit more into that game space mm. or that coaching, tactical coaching space. Um, I do recall, and particularly in, in the earlier days in Wellington uh, High School, college basketball, like if there was a, um, 
if there was an offense that seemed to be the flavor of the month, everybody would motion or triangle or, or whatever because, you know, the Jordan ran it or the Bulls ran it, I should say. And uh, so it was successful, so therefore we can implement it. But that I, I remember um, having conversations with um, other coaches and I would look at that and I will go, I want to be different. So, so like, if, if we're running motion, I'll, I'll go, well, I'm going to try something else, all right? Or if you want to... Um, if you want to run the triangle, well, guess what? I'm, I'm going to smash you with uh, with defense. I'm going to find ways around that. So I would like look at running, say, um, multiple system defenses and, and, and just really changing things up so that we weren't running into the same thing all the time. So I'm wondering, is that something you look at? Because you, know, you see it coming out of the States, you know, dribble drive or, or, or what have you, or the small ball stuff. Do, do you look to at that and go, let's emulate that? Or do you look and go, well, I want to be different or how do I become different or mold some of that from into my space? Yeah, I, I think I look, uh, I've always looked at the athletes I have. I always mm. look at what have I got and then that's how we're going to play. Mm. So, you know, we nice. look at, we, we want to look at, you know, you want to have your system in your head, yeah. but then mm. you look at the group and we're saying, oh, we can't do that. <laughs> we're, not, yeah. we're not an athletic group. We're not quick, so we can't do that. So we can do this, but we can't do that. So with... You know, if I took, take an example, the Jets, you know, we've got a group. Um, we're running some stuff that we feel is going to be conducive to the group. Yeah. You know, we've got a, we've got a, um, I feel we've got a good, I call them Dobermans. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. So they can yep. get up. They, we've got athletic length. Yep. We're really, yep. in, in our guard space, we're, we're tall. We've got, you know, our point guards are 6'4". Yeah, right. Shooting guard. Shooting guards mm. are going to have six, five, six, six. Swingmen are six, six, and we've got length and athleticism. Yep. And that's always something I loved about my teams in the past that we've got that kind of length and athleticism. So defensively, we can be really aggressive, yep. and um, we can, you know, we can be that active, aggressive type style of defense, not sit back and be conservative. We've got guys who can really compete. Um, you know, some of our young guys, they, you know, they've got, you know, you, you want rock wheelers and not poodles, and they're rock wheelers. <laughs> you know? So, yeah. And, you know, some of those guys I've said to them, look, you're going to be playing in this league and you're going to play. And you're going to play against some seasoned vets. You're going to be playing against imports and tall blacks. But here's, here's, here's a challenge for you. I know the nature of how you play, and I think. You know, you're a youngster. You want to you want to play in this league, where you there's no better challenge than playing some of the great mm-hmm. quarterbacks in this league and measure mm-hmm. yourself against it. Yeah. So we will help you develop your game, but you know this is why we recruited these guys because mm-hmm. they they've got an edge. They're an nice. edgy type. But they've got an edge to them where they compete. It's really hard to recognise which kids can compete in the junior space. You know, these two, three of them, ex junior tall blacks. But it's hard to see that. Yeah. And I know that the two of them that went to Mana College, um, they've got that edge. They have got that, <laughs> and I agree, the kids from the park, they mm-hmm. have, it's sort of ingrained and it's, it's I would say, you know, it's hereditary. It's, it's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's uh, what else is it? You know, it's, it's in their blood. But, you know, the, the kids from the par, man, they just play hard. You know, and you think about all the, you know, Randall Bishop, even um, TJ Peranawa, when he was mm-hmm. TJ Peranawa, when he played basketball, that's, you know, the way he plays rugby, that's how all those basketballers at Mana College play. Mm-hmm. They've got that edge. They play, they know how, what it looks like to play hard. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you can't teach that competitive edgy thing. Uh-huh. And you've got guys like that, you're like, wow, we can harness that. Yeah, Frank. We can use it, you know. So I look at the athletes we have; those guys, you know. I always believe we've got to be. If we sh- offensively, we could shoot the lights out one game, and the next game we could shoot thirty percent. But as long as we're constant in our defense, we're still yes. in the game. We can still be in the game. Yep. So our focus has been a lot on our defensive, yeah, you know, defensive man to man. What does that look like? You know, help recovers. Our rotations. Nice. What does that look like? We have to be good. Yeah, we've got individual great defenders, but, we, but we've got to try and develop a good team 
we're defense doing and structure. Yeah. And, then, and then obviously looking at what defensive systems work for us mm. and conducive for us, and then we implement that as part of our system. And then offensively, what are we good at? You know, yep. are we good at speed, pace and space? You know, everybody wants to run transition offense real quickly down the floor. What's the best one for us? Um, we, we, we recruit based on that. We recruit based on you know, the uh, imports. What should they look like? Well, we want a guy in this position and a guy in this position because we don't have guys in that position. Um, and that's, and that's, you know, that's what we look for. Um, and that's a conversation I had with the assistant coach before the season start. This is how we want to play. This is what we look like. Bang. And then we start implementing the building blocks to our system yeah. in the first four to five weeks. So the last four, five, six weeks, we've implemented a lot of the building blocks around our defensive system and our offensive system. And now it's just yes. introducing our system. And the players are now understanding, oh, that's why we did all that stuff for the first two weeks. <laughs> it's, it's, you know, it's a part of the nice. process, the bigger yes. picture, so players start to they get an understanding of our tactical style yep. and they can think about how that works on the floor um, and they feel a lot more comfortable about learning that stuff. Um, Beautiful. So that, and to answer your question, that, that's, and I guess most coaches mm. are like that. Um, you know, it's like the first situation I had when I was coaching the Saints in 2000. Not an ideal situation because I didn't. I had players I didn't really want. Mm. It wasn't conducive to the way I wanted to play. Yeah. So the next year I was still going to be there. I said, no, I, I can't. Not for me. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's not for me. Yeah. It's sort of like I have a vision and, and way we want to play, and that's all part of the strategic three-year to four-year plan where we'll be competitive. I, I believe we will be competitive in the first year. The good thing about youth is they're eager, yeah. eager to yeah. play, they're eager to get into the game, and that enthusiasm is quite, it, 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 it reflects on all the other yeah. guys. And, you know, we were just talking about it, we knew that when, when um, Nathaniel Sermon and Klein, his brother, arrived and would get into training, the level of intensity would go from here to here, <laughs> and, and it yep. has, it's just different from here. Yeah. So here, you can just see it, and they're just like, you know, and that's infectious. Mm. It's really good to have. Yeah, yeah. I see that our, our coach is saying, look how it's affecting everybody else. Everybody else is starting to really Lifting, yeah. Them. And um, no, no doubt about it, we've, we've had some really good competitive sessions of late, and that's really good to see because that's, you know, and you know, I talk to our agents with the and ports overseas and our other QE who's overseas, who's coming back for us, you know, they're really excited about, you know, they're excited, one, that we've got youth, and they're excited about the style of play we're going to implement, and they're excited about being part of that, and just really, you know, we, is that, the only way for us is up, we, we finished ninth last year out of 10 teams, so, you know, we were excited about, yeah, and the chain, the team has changed, will change a lot, mm -hmm. personnel will change mm -hmm. a lot, um, so we're excited about the journey, we know it's not going to be easy, but, Again, you know, we're going into this thing with our eyes open, and we're really, you know, we're reflective of where we're going to be. Um, we we have our own expectations, um, but I feel like, you know, I feel like we will be competitive. At the end of the day, um, if it all comes back, I'm the captain of the ship. I'm the leader of the group. Uh, my job, I know, when we get into games. Um, my own competitive edge will come out um, as a head yeah, coach. Yeah, that, yeah. That's always going to be there. I know that we, we potentially could be the youngest team in the league, but I'm throwing it out the window. I'm saying, look, we're going to be in it. You know, they've got yeah. five guys, we've got five guys. Yep. I'll be doing that's the it. best I can do with my coaching staff to get this team ready tactically. Yep. And then also throughout the games, you know, working hard on myself to, to put us in a position where we could beat teams. Mm -hmm be competitive and then get us across the line to win games. Uh, but at the same time, we, we will respect the opposition 100%. There's going to be some great mm. teams in this league and there are great coaches in this league. Um, but we, 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 we've got to, you know, like I say to the players, you've got to back yourself. Yeah. Yeah, you have to back yourself. We have confidence in you. We're going to back ourselves as coaching staff. I guess one of the other things that I... Uh, connections that I've made in the past is with the FIBA 
and the World Association of Basketball Coaches. Yeah. So I've got two really prominent mm. mentors who help support me. Um, one is Patrick Hunt, and he's the president of the World Association of Basketball Coaches at FIBA. Wow. Um, and also a guy called Peter Lonergan, who's um, the Basketball Australia High Performance General Manager and Coach Director. Mm. Um, so I've been privileged to work with those guys um, abroad nice. um, yeah. in, in, in the Middle East and work for them in the Middle East and in, in Asia um, um, in my la- in the, as, as a FIBA WABC coach instructor yep. in the last three to four years and they've been a real good um, you know mentoring foil for me um, in terms of what I'm doing with my own coaching so I'm yeah. really good, privileged to have that support there um, they're the two main guys that I look to um, and then there's, uh, you know, if I look here in New Zealand, you know, some of the current head coaches that I talk to currently is Mick Downer, the Australian at the Hawks. You know, I talk to Mick pretty much every week. We have a good conversation. It's just being having a good fraternity of coaches that can respect each other. Mm. You know, we respect each other as professionals coaching in our own space. Uh, we'll compete on the floor and in the game, but at the end of the day, we can... We can have a beer, quiet beer, and talk about, you know, what is it that you did against yeah. you? What is it that I did against you? What would you have done differently? Those sorts of things. And that's just yeah. part of respect and trust that's cool. as a coaching fraternity. Yeah. Um, you know, Zico Coronel, I still talk to him. Haven't spoken to him for a little while, but I did catch up with him on, on a Zoom when he was in Japan and his situation there. He's really loving it there and great to see him. I've had some involvement with him. Beautiful. Um, you know, people don't nice. understand him, but I, I understand who he's at. I, understand, <laughs> I totally get him. Um, and um, and then also, you know, the, the other guys have been part of that. I'll try to catch up with Pedal. He's back now in the Taranaki. And also Paul when he's overseas. Yeah. And also some coaching, other coaches in the in other countries. Um, the head coach of the uh, Guam program, uh, Brett Tipton. He's a good man. He's, you know, I've had spent time with him in Asia. Um really good resource um, and then also you know um, the US I've spent a bit of time with Oklahoma City Thunder and some time with uh, uh, Christy the general manager mm. there and, and you know really good insight into how they run their business I know. also had uh, 10 days with the coaching staff there and both the blue team and the KC. so a lot of these experiences have, I guess yeah helped mold who I am and how yep. I view the world and the game um, yeah, so it's you know, forever changing. You know, I've got I'm, I'm, I'm a growth mindset guy with Carol Dweek and that and all her her stuff. Yes. And, and I'm about that, and we'll, we'll we'll continue to make mistakes, but we'll continue to learn from them. Yeah, beautiful, um, nice. What yeah. is what are some of the? I was going to ask you, what are some of the fitness pass fail standards? Are there for the basketball? <laughs> like, is there a measurement beat <laughs> yeah. test? That the thing? Well, can you share what some of those yeah. are? Like pass yeah, fail? Absolutely. They don't pass. Then yeah. Lincoln get out and get in the gym boy or whatever it is yeah at this level at this level yeah you got the beat testing usually i'd say for basketballs they need to get over 12 yeah minimum is 12 mm. point guards i'll be saying 15 nice yeah <laughs> yeah because <laughs> the point guard for me you know they have to get us into our stuff they're pushing the ball but also they have to put pressure on the other one the yeah. other point guard yeah. when they're playing defense so they've got to be the fittest guys in the team the two the guards the shooting guards and small forwards also have to be up there or thereabouts you know yeah. 13 14 but in terms of you know if you think about the bronco test which is a good test also that, that rugby uses you know they've got a mm. cone at 20 meters and a cone yeah. at 40 meters and a cone at 60 meters they've got to do that five times um you know between you know, anything under six minutes is good for a basketballer. Elite level, you're at 5.30 and 5.30 above. Less less than five minutes 30. So those, those are some of the standards. Yeah. That and I've said to a number of our players, that's where you need to be. Um, and, and then that's where you have to be. So, um, yeah, we've got some of our guys doing extras now. <laughs> yeah, we, we do at the end of training in you know, the last four weeks because we feel like we need to add a little bit of a conditioning element to... Our practices, right at the yep. end of practices, we, we get them to run 17 widths. It's what we call 17 widths. Yeah. And the players have to run that in, a, in, in under a minute or a minute 10. I, I, back in the day, if 
for us, we did it in a minute. These yeah. guys, ooh, they're struggling. <laughs> so, we've said, so they have to run it in a minute. And then the first five players who come in first, uh, mm. they have to shoot foul shots. And we go, we go you've got to shoot in the penalty. You've got to shoot one plus one. So as a collective, the five players as a collective have to make five foul shots. Yeah. Um, and if they might make five foul shots, we stretch out. With that's the end. Of that's training. the end. Yeah. If they don't, they run another <laughs> seventy, and we, and we add another ten seconds to that, and they come back and they've got to shoot five foul five. shots again before they can get a reprieve. Yeah. Um, and they can stretch and they're out. So we add a little bit of the conditioning element nice. right at the end. Um, yeah, we've, we've uh, and like I said, we've arrived here. I've arrived here. We've created some partnerships. We've got an MOU with the Manatu Rugby Union, and they're awesome. going to look after our guys in terms of the strength and conditioning area, and also okay. provide some mental skills yeah. team coaching as well. So we're really excited about building these partnerships within the region mm. um, to help support our game. We 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 so we're cross code collaboration now, and that's really mm. that's really refreshing and. Yeah, I guess that's that's a sign of the times now. A lot of the sports now are working with each other. Um, you know, there's a there's a massive shift in philosophy in the development foundation and development space in New Zealand in sport. Yeah. Where we're saying kids should play a number of sports and not specialise in any of those until you know they get to a point where they're 15 or 16 and they make a decision they want to play rugby or basketball. So yeah. we're encouraging our kids to play other sports because those skills are all transferable. You know, touch rugby, agility, yep. yeah. hand-eye coordination, speed, you know, endurance, yep. all that sort of stuff. That, that That's transferable skills for basketball. Netball's the same. Um, so, Beautiful. yeah, we've, made a, you know, we've, we've just moved and, and creating partnerships with some of the key uh, sport organisations here, um, also Basketball 1 or 2, to help. You know, for us, we are at the elite level. We're at the NBL level. But we are invested in what happens in the junior space because if we want kids to play at the highest level and they mm. leave school, then where do they go? You know, we, we're a pathway. What's the pathway? Yeah, there's yeah. another pathway going to the US. I'm saying Europe's a pathway now. Going to Australia and playing in club basketball there and NBL1 is a pathway. It's not just us. It could be that the athlete could go to the US. So it's how do we develop some structure in the representative program to help build the game, raise the growth of the game first, raise the profile of the game, and then increase participation numbers, understanding where participation ends and then where does performance, that where does development begin and where does performance begin. So yeah. ensuring that the kids get a good, positive, meaningful experience in the participation space and then additional really good alignment to what does basketball look like in the representative space. Um, and help supporting mm. that, those areas for the basketball one or two. And using, obviously, nice. the lead coaches in the regions to help um, advocate for that and, and build that. That's Coach, awesome. that's, that's awesome. Yeah, it's really it's really refreshing to hear. And, and it's, it's refreshing to hear all the things that you talk about. You're talking about culture, you're talking about leadership, you're talking about character, we're talking about values. And these are all the people elements, and mm. it's not just about... How do you run this, or how do you run why, or mm. what happens there? And, and that's the important part on the game, and it's part of the practice to form your team, obviously, because it's the game, but it's the elements behind it and support it. And I, I love that you talk about the holistic approach to things. So I guess as we, um, if it's okay, Coach, we start to, to, to wrap up just a little sure. bit on this really wonderful quarter that we've questions. had. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, we still uh, feed some more questions. <laughs> we still feed us more questions. But. I just wanted to, um, to, to divert a little bit, and then, Joe, you can just jump in whenever okay. you like. It's, um, I, I just need to ask you a, a couple of things, because when you're talking about um, um, OKC and, and, and obviously the connection mm -hmm. that, um, that that you've had there and, and, and the connection that was there with through Stephen Adams and so forth, right? I just want your view. Coach, the NBA. Yeah. Where do you see it? Or, or, or who's your prediction? Or let's, start oh. the, um, <laughs> let's start with the West. Let's start with the West. <laughs> Um, yes. Yeah, I, I would have said Golden State, um, but yes. Steph Curry got injured the other day. Mm, so it's really that. interesting to see. Yeah, I mean, it's a challenging time because you know they, they've got some work to do to get through to the end of the season. Yep. Um, mm. And there's a number of teams in the West. Um, who else is out West? Uh, yeah. Uh, 
Grizzlies? Uh, Grizzlies are, are mm, they're, yeah. they're, they could be another team. Yeah, they're, 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 yeah, they're, they're, they'll, they'll be there or thereabouts. Utah, yeah, Utah, the Jazz will be mm-hmm. there or thereabouts. Yeah, I, I think it would, you know, I would be surprised if the Grizzlies um, get to the finals. The other yeah, they've got, a, they've got a young, they got a young, yeah. fearless yeah. approach yeah. to the way that they work, but they got, yeah. they got the old head of Stephen yeah. Adams yeah. And, and a few others around there yeah. with that. Okay, what about the East coach? Um, yeah, I like uh, when I look at it at the East. Yeah, I, I think um, Brooklyn. <coughs> you know, even yeah. Yeah. It, it, it depends mm. entirely on Kyrie if he's available for some of those key games. Yep, Brooklyn. If yep. not, if he's not available, then then I'm going to say um, um, Bulls because I'm a Bulls fan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've always been a Bulls That's... fan, and I think that this could be our year. It's been a it's, it's been Wait. a it's been a long, long, long. Let me long. write that down. The Bulls, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> so um, it's, just, it's, just, it's just interesting because the NBA season is so long, and yeah. you know it's mm. really when a you know, team, some teams might peak in the in the playoffs. You know they might not be playing well, you know, in the last 10, 12 games of the season, but peak in, 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 in early in the. But I, I feel like they're in the right space to to, yeah. to make a run. Yeah, and, and that that would be my pick if if Kyrie is. You know, obviously, the, the needs are, uh, you know, if they have Kyrie and he's available for, you know, he, it's going to be tough. They, they yeah. would come out. But I, I, I'm I'm backing my Bulls, Bulls. for the first time. <laughs> So All right, so you heard it here first. <laughs> it's the Bulls versus the Grizzlies in the NBA Finals. There you go. Yeah, that's, Put your pets on now. That's, that's what I'd like to see. Um, yeah, yeah, that's what yeah. you'd like to see. Yeah, but I, I look cool. at the NBA, and the NBA, I, it's only a couple of weeks. I, I call them the financial beast mm. in sport. Mm. You know, that's what it is. You know, it's just, it's um, it's amazing the amount of revenue that it generates. and. Yeah. You know, mm. you know, spending those ten days at OKC, just just looking at you know they're in a twenty five million dollar facility. Um, yeah. The facility's purposely built for the athletes. Wow. Um, you know, I had the opportunity to walk through the facility, and there was this one room, about the size of this theater, that yeah. and there was you know a coffee machine, a couple of you know um, deluxe sofas, um, <laughs> coffee machine, big TV screen. There was things you could do there, and in the middle of the room was a barber's chair. <laughs> <All right. laughs> and I'm saying, yeah, me and Anus Wafon, who's the uh, medical director for Barcelona, New Zealand, him and I were there. We both spent ten days yeah. together, just uh, observation, looking, watching the yeah. coaches, and the D League team, the G, well, now G League team, and the, the team. You know, so I, I spent time with the G League team and was part of their. One of their games, home games, sat in the team nice. meeting, sat on the bench and yeah, watched how they operated, which is really good. And the head coach then <clears> is now the head coach of OKC now, so that was wow. a good opportunity. Um, um, and then also spent time, you know, just getting to understand the nature of the NBA business because um, we met with Sam Presti twice and he was a very enlightening person because he, he talked about the biggest challenge for him uh, are the NBA agents. <laughs> True. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's his major challenge is coming to some sort of compromise and agreement with wow. the players. Yeah, you know, yeah. Like, well, yeah. You know, that's, you know, he said you have to deal with you know, six, seven agents who represent all these players. You wow. All right. You, know, you look at our budget, you know, like I'm just like, wow, that's a, you know, that's but at the same time, you know, he you know, he's he's had a wealth of experience, was with San Antonio and then became with OKC and they've had some challenging times more recently. Mm-hmm. But it just opened our eyes to how big it is. It is a financial beast. It's a financial business. It's massive. Um, they have all the players have all the luxuries. The purposeful built facility, you know, to the point there's a car room there every day. So if the players come in and they want their car, come on, you know, he's out the back uh, to right do it. While they were, it's just it's just phenomenal. Phenomenal, so, man. Yeah. So it's, it's that, that's interesting, and you think about you know um, what it's like here, and, and then. That's, that's not a comparison, but they have a huge amount of resource. You know, they can yeah. go on the road. Mm. You know, when they're on the road in the jet, you know, there's 25 <laughs> players, people in the jet. That's playing, coaching staff, chefs, 
So it's just an, another level. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, uh, mm. it's, um, but it was, it's, it's great to, to, to be part of that and see how it all works. Um, and then also a lot of things that resonate is you sit there and you're watching their practice and some of the drills they're running are drills that you would run back here. Yeah. You think, wow, yeah. they're doing five-man weave, yeah. three-man yeah. weave, uh, uh, you know, three-back, three-on, two-back, two-on-one transition. And you're thinking, wow, so they're doing it at this level. Yeah. We're doing, you know, we're thinking about, oh, what drills should we do? Let's look on YouTube. Find <laughs> the next drill. So yeah. you're saying, here's a drill that's been done for years. Your yeah. have, this has been, just goes back to the 60s. They ran yeah. they used to do five-man weaves and three-man weaves. And they're doing it at the NBL. Yeah. NBL. That's so awesome. It's quite wow. interesting. You know, it's still, there's still a lot of good stuff that, 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 that's, you know, that's been in the past that you can still use now and today. Did you, did you see in your time there, it sounds like a lot of the, so that those drills as an example, they, did they focus heavily on the basics? It sounds like with, with your time there or from what you saw or? No, from what I saw was, you know, a lot of those drills are just warming, getting warmed up. Yeah, and right. They, and they really wow. only had half an hour to 40 minute trainings at that time. It was just a training in between the next four games because right. the yeah, four yeah. games within two, yep. two, 10 days. 10 days, 11 yeah. 11 days, 11 days they had four games. Yeah. So they managed to have gotcha. a where they could go 45 minutes, usually during the season. Yeah. In the season, they're really only doing a, a scout, um, a scout, assistant coach presenting a scout in the auditorium, and then they go on the floor, walk through, and they have maybe 20 minutes of shooting. Yeah. Out. So that whole process takes about 40 minutes, 45 minutes. Wow. Train, they're not practice as we yeah. being practice. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's that, and then it's media, and then it's on game day media, and you know, me and Moose were able to watch three home games and put the red carpet, so you know, we <laughs> looked after by the, awesome. the, the G, GM's EA, so you know, we had everything you know, looked after and it was phenomenal that, you know, just being in that environment, seeing, you know, the level wow. of, I guess, skill mm. and athleticism is the thing that struck me the most. Um, yeah, at an athletic level, uh, you know, the speed and, mm. and um, the agility of which they play at, at that level, it's just phenomenal. phenomenal eh? Wow. Yeah. And what about your... Uh, this was another question I wanted to ask. So it sounds like a lot of the stuff that you're building up with the team is focusing on the players, focusing on your leadership and your style and what you're going to do. When do you as the coach and collectively as the group and the team start to look at the other teams and what their potential threats are within the team and how they play and all that sort of stuff? Mm. When do you start to do that? Well, what, I've, what I've, I've started to do is look at the coaches who are in the league this year right? Yeah. and look at film from last year yep. and the games that they played last year. So we've right. got film on all the games that these guys coached last year. So gotcha. you know, we look at them and there's some consistent themes coming through. So as, as any other coaching scouting group would do, we'd mm. come film and say, let's prepare this, let's have a look at this. And, and then once we get into this, we get the 15 group together. And as we get closer to our first game, you know, the ears, Taranaki ears, they're our first game. We'll be looking at, you know, film. And, and, and there's no hiding it. The, the key yeah. thing for us is no one's seen me coach yeah. in the last... Wow, well, so true. Every, yeah. Every, yes. every, yeah. Everything I'm doing with the Jets is new. Yeah. And people won't know what we run because I'm a new head coach here. And, yeah, and yeah. that's an element of surprise. Um, and that's the luxury we have. So no one will be able to cut film. Yeah. No one's seen me coach in the last 10 Yes, because they would, won't have any film on that. Um, so um, that that's you know that's that's exciting for us. Yeah, and it's exciting for us to sit back and look at what other teams are doing, um, and then com you know we everybody does it. All the yeah. coaches will compile the film, will cut film, and say this is what it looks like. Yeah, um, we're hoping to play someone preseason. You know, we're keen to play regardless of who we play. Um, yeah, we, we're you know we're working with teams to look at playing having pre-season games away at some point um, yep. and getting us into playing games so we can see what that looks like. Um, yeah, but that's, that's where we're up. Yeah, we do we do look at other teams. We have been looking at films from other teams and the coaches that have nice. so that we are aware, okay, they, they, they run this stuff and yeah. they run this stuff. So we, we'll be aware of, you know, that's, you know, again, as any good coach would prepare for that and look at how would we negate some of the things that they do and how we will counter mm. that. Yeah. And then also look at you know, you know, what sort of lineups we would have, 
who would be best to defend that. You know, yeah, if, nice. All those questions come to the base, and that's, and that's part of us or what I do and plan for, for our coaching group and our group. Our well, that's good. I also wanted to ask you, Coach, what, in your experience, and because and, you've spent, obviously, a heck of a lot of time, New Zealand Nationals director, basketball coaching director, and all that sort of stuff, the Institute of Sport with the education space and the other things that you've done there, your time with, the, with FIBA as well. In your opinion, what are the differences, if any, or well, not if any, what are the differences between what makes a good coach and a great coach in basketball? Ooh. In your, in your yeah. view. In my view, um, if I was to strip it all back, yeah. it comes to philosophy for me. Mm. I think, you know, yeah, first of all, we're dealing with people, right? A yep. coach is a person. Yep. So we're dealing with people. And you know that some people will have their own world view about things and how they do things. The challenge is one saying to them, what, what is your philosophy? What are your values and beliefs? Mm-hmm. What do you live by you know, as, a, as a coach? You know, what are you about? Why are you coaching? I want yeah. to coach. But, you know, what are, what, what, what's your reason? What's the why? You know, it's establishing whether that's what they, why they want to coach. Mm. And sometimes you might have to challenge that philosophy at times. Yeah. So it's not challenging it in a, in a disrespectful way. Yep. It's saying, hey, have you ever thought about this as opposed to the way you're thinking now? Yeah. How would that make a difference to your athletes? Um, athletes are different now. Mm-hmm. You know, our, young, our young generation are totally different. You know, they're IT savvy. You know, mm-hmm. so as a coach, you know, things like using internet, as you know, using your apps, they're app friendly. So having that as a support mechanism to help them grow is very important. Their development. Mm-hmm. And with coaches, it really starts with what are you about? Who are you? Why are you coaching? Why do you want to coach? What's the real reason behind that? Um, it's understanding who you are as a person. You know, I think for me it was a, like my basketball experiences. It gave me uh, you know, a whole world of opportunities playing 10 years professionally in New Zealand. Mm. It gave me a lot of things. Uh, you know, it taught me a lot of things too. Discipline, how to work with people, you know, how to respect other people, um, what winning and losing look like. Mm-hmm. You, know? you know, understanding that it's okay to lose. Yep. You know, that's part of growth. That's part of learning. Making it as a positive. You know, yeah, we've lost those. Yeah, but now, what what have I learned from losing? What are the, some mm-hmm. of the key things I can change? Um, so for coaches, yeah, that, for me, if you're engaging coaches, I think it's really asking them the question: Why is it that you want to do this? Yeah. Some of them will say, "Oh, yeah, I want to coach my kid." You know, bang, bang, bang. <laughs> You know, or, you know, and then we strip back and say, look, so what happens if you, your kid leaves your team? What are you going to do? Are you going to leave yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah, so that, mm. that's the question I have. Like, if you want to be a coach, wouldn't you rather be a coach for life? Mm. You know? Yeah, just, yeah I'll great coach point. My kid, mm. But wouldn't you want to coach for life? You know, it's about, you know, I, I think that's really important. We're coaching basketball. I'm coaching basketball and it's for life because I love the game. Mm. But I believe that, there are lots, lots of lessons to learn in the game. Yeah. Um, for me, more so than the athletes, in the 20 odd years I've been coaching, 25 years, yeah, I've learned a lot about myself, more about myself than the athletes. Yeah, I've learned a lot about athletes, I've learned more, more about myself than people and how to be resilient, how to understand people better. You know, what's, what can I do to, do to, to help that? And I think. Coaches who want to be coaches, they've got to think about why are they doing this. Mm. Um, awesome. You know, why, why am I doing this? What's my philosophy? Where have I come from? You know, are they, do they, do those things, are they going to have an impact on how I coach? They should have an impact. The beliefs should have an impact that, on me as a person. And, you know, this is what I bring if I want to coach, you know, and then, you know, as a coach, developer, coach, director, you just want to say, okay, how can we help develop this this coach? Mm-hmm. And what What's the coaching pathway? What are some of the things we can do to help support his coaching? And also continue as a mentor. You know, I mentor a lot of coaches and they always tell me, well, why don't you tell me how, why, why don't you never ever say to me how to <laughs> how coach? To the, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you never, yeah, you never say to me, oh, I need you to work on this and you should do this, you should do that. I said, because it's not about 
me. You're the one who's coaching. Mm -hmm. So it's got to work for you. So I spend a lot of time asking questions yeah. about why they mm. did this in the game. And then we then, through those questions, we stimulate the discussion and conversation around what was it was the, that came into his head when he made that decision. Mm. And I say to the coach, like, you will answer the question. And then that validates why you made the decision. Yeah. For me, I think, okay, I get it. I understand why you did that. And then I can say, wow, that's really insightful. That's really good. You know, like, I didn't think of that. And then there might be times where I just say, well, do, so what could you have done differently in that subbing situation or in that timeout when you change the tactical approach or the attention to detail to the change of a tactical pro approach? Because you might have just changed an offense where you felt like you wanted to get more out of one side of the offense or the strong side. But then you thought late, later in terms of the tension of the detail, we could have got some stuff out of that weak side as well. Mm -hmm. Didn't think about it at the time. So how, how you know, and that's the questions we, we really try and dig deep into coaches and why they made decisions on the floor. And then when I go watch practices and coaches say, come on, let's just I'll practice coaching. And, I, and I'll just say, hey, did you, and all the time in training, did, how many questions did you ask the players? You know, how, how, many, how often did you allow for checking for understanding and providing feedback and questioning? How many times did you ask questions of the players, mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, those sorts of things. And then, you know, your structure of your session, did you allow for them to explore a little bit or was it all prescribed? Was it all prescribed? All right, guys, we're doing this. You've got to do this. You've got to do that. You've got to do that. Or was it, mm -hmm. hey, Jaren, we're going to set this game up. This is what it looks like. I want you to play out of that, and then we'll see how we go. Yeah. And you mm. provide the parameters, and then after that you go, oh, so what do you think you could have done here, Johnny? If we move the ball to that side and he's got a driving lane, what would you have done defensively? Any different, you know, that's what I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah. The art of questioning, uh, effective nice. questioning, and then the art of listening mm. too, because listening is really important. I don't think the effective listening, you know, your, your effect, effective listening skills, you know, you've got to key on what the player's telling you. And sometimes coaches, we key on different words yeah. and then the way they say it. And we, we don't often think back to, okay, hang on a sec, what is the message he's trying to send me? What's he trying to tell me? Is he not understanding things? And then how can I put it in a way he can understand? And you've got to do it really quickly. But, you know, for me, that's, you know, that's the art of coaching really is, is checking for understanding providing the environment, letting them explore, questioning them, and then coming back and then starting to say, okay, now we're going to put some constraints in the environment and let's see how you handle those. And mm -hmm. then bring them back again and changing it up, changing the environment. So it is a challenging space to be in with, with the junior athletes, uh, but it's rewarding. I find it really rewarding. I, I'm really privileged to have coached in the junior space for many years and um, privileged to have worked with all the athletes that I have. And I know that early in my coaching journey, things, you know, if I look back to when I first started coaching, I'm totally different from where I am, was then and to now. And that's just part of learning, making mistakes, Growth, yeah. growing, and, and continue to grow. So, um, yeah, I'm excited nice. about the journey. And, yeah. Man, I love those answers oh. that you've got there, taking down a few notes of what you've shared about understanding who the person is as a person their philosophies and i love the the fact about the need to deal you're dealing with people the connection the engagement and how you're trying mm. to build the person the art of questioning and listening some really awesome points there and thank you for sharing those i um those are going to be great points that i that i feel anyway transfer to not only just the basketball coaching realm but anywhere in life and that's that's oh. part of the reason why brian and i like connecting with people like yourself to share yeah, these experiences awesome. because they will resonate and connect in so many different ways i do want to ask you as well do you do you have shooting competitions from the foul line with any of your sorry what position were you playing were you point guard i i play shooting guard shooting guard i, shot really, shooting yeah, I do mm. yeah I do, you do and do so they, I, I, what, what's the punishment or penalty if you lose or if they lose i i i, I buy coffee <laughs> yeah. I'd like coffee for them. So I've, got a, I've, got a, I've got a shooting competition with one of the guys at the moment, and uh, yeah. 
it's the first first to make seven threes from any spot and um, nice. he's winning at the moment i own, I own two coffees <laughs> so I'll give a shout out to the fellow Leo Pippi because I own oh. two coffees. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. So, uh, it's awesome. Yeah. Great to uh, hear. Well, um, Joe, do you have any other questions that you would like to ask? I do. I've coach? got I've got one more here. Yeah, one more. And I just yep. wanted to yeah, ask. Beautiful. Sorry, uh, Coach. I'm mindful of your time, but I wanted to ask this. How did the meeting come about with you and the owners? So for the property brokers, like the the, owner, the ownership of the Manawatu Jets and that sort of thing, or property bro- is it, are they property brokers Manawatu Jets or just property brokers Jets? They're property brokers Manawatu Jets. Yeah. Gotcha. So property just, brokers. Just PB Jets. PB so, Jets. Um, yeah, yeah. It's an interesting one because the chairman of the former board, yeah, and I were coaching colleagues many years ago. So we used to coach against each other many years ago, and he was gotcha. the chairman of the, the now disbanded um, Jets, Jets board. Yeah. Um, so he he called me one time, was talking about another coach, and then said to me, you know, what are you doing? And I said, well, you know, to be quite honest, I'm, I'm looking um, keen to get back into coaching, and, you know, it's just it's just a matter of time. I said, look, I, I talked to him, to, um, you know, the Saints general manager about what they were doing next year, had a conversation with him, had another conversation with uh, the, the mainland Eagles because they were, they were looking in another direction. And then, um, yeah, and then um, that, that's where the initial conversation started. And then gotcha. I sort of gave them, you know, the, the Canterbury head coaches details. And then, you know, a couple of days later, you know, Kevin Smith rang me back and said, hey, uh, just want to expand further on our conversation about about you know you're not doing anything are you free this weekend <laughs> and i said oh yeah i am and he said well the, the the new owner of the jets is in wellington and he wants to catch up with you and i said it's okay that sounds good so let's have a conversation mm. so i guess immediately i met with him on the saturday and we had a you know a really good chat and he, his wife came down and she, she was lovely and you know we, we sort of realized that you know yeah our our, our life and direction we've come from him and his, his career and me and my education and basketball career were sort of similar, similar. parallels in terms of nice. our beliefs and alignment yeah. so we, 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 we had a really positive conversation and then you know my wife Tony was out with my daughter Eden and our dog she was walking him down in, in, in um, Oriental Bay and, and uh, we were up at the at, the, at, uh, um, at a hotel on, on, on Lampton Quay and, uh, on the terrace and then he says, he's, we've been talking for two hours, and he said, look, invite your wife around. So I missed her just to come up here. She came down, and she had a sit down with us, and we had a corridor for another half an hour, 45 minutes, and it, and it seemed really good. That It was just real, a seamless um, back and forward nice. conversation. It was quite easy conversation. And then we continued our conversations the next week, and he invited us up there. Uh, for a couple of days and we went up there a couple of times and the second time we went up there we were there for a foundation function of all the key foundation members for the Jets this year um, and then the next day we, we had a good conversation over breakfast and we agreed the terms and um, at that point you know we were pretty sold on coming here to Palmy and you know we would make the move and, you know, my wife's always wanted to move to a smaller town <laughs> so she got her wish beautiful and, uh, <laughs> And she works in the banking sector, so she, she can work every, anywhere in New Zealand. So she was really happy that that, that was the case. And she was like, yes, if we get to get out of Wellington. <laughs> so somewhere, somewhere smaller where my daughter can walk to school and, you know, mm. and, you know work is easier. So, um, yeah, no, it's been really enlightening. So that's how it all happened. Awesome. You know, we haven't looked back, so it's been a good good, good time to be here. Yeah, really oh, beautiful. It. That's awesome. Yeah. Nice. That, that was, I, might, I just, I didn't even realize the time. Sorry. I'll, yeah. I'll stop trying yeah. to, hog, no, no, no. I'll stop hogging all the That's questions. Okay. <laughs> no, That's it's, okay. it's been awesome, but there's some really good questions. And mm-hmm. I think as we, I think it's probably an opportune place to wrap up. I mean, we could, we could go for a yeah. lot longer, I suspect, yeah. because of the, the insights that you're sharing. It's just real powerful. Um, so I guess in looking to wrap up um, this podcast that Joe and I have, have put together and what we've really tried to do is either look for and, and, and talk to people to share their stories that are in the service of others, which is 
in your space as well, but also um, to be able to create a better future. So my, I guess my final question before we look to wrap up um, is, Coach, if you could wish a better future, what would be the a better future for, from your perspective, for Aotearoa, all right, what would be the three things that you would hope for, that you would be able to, to deliver, to give? What would be the three things? I think one of the three things that I want, want to be able to see and what I believe in is that, um, that we be the humanistic side of people um, mm. What I like is, um, and it's and it stems from my my mum and my dad. My mother always, you know, she always said, you know, it, it'd be nice to see that people care for one another. Mm. And we are in challenging times now, and uh, mm. you know, they've been very challenging here in New Zealand in the last mm. month. And, and uh, for me, I, you know, I've got a general feeling that if people could care for one another more. Um, regardless of your circumstance, regardless of the colour of your skin, I think that that, that leads to right. better people. And, you know, mm. we are the human race, you know, and we're all one. You know, we're not part of the mm. farmer. We, we, we're people. Mm. And um, I feel that's one of the most important things about, um, that I believe is the number one thing for me is being a good person um, and respecting your fellow man. Yeah. Um, respecting their opinions as well. You know, we've been through some challenging times, um, and um, you know, I've had friends who are on the other side of the fence, but they're yep. still my friends. Mm. Um, regardless of their belief, I still care about them. I still care about who they are, and um, and that that's that, for me. That's one of the things. Yep. Nice. Um, if I was to look broadly at, at sport, um, yep. if I was to use sport because sport has been but the, the the real vehicle that's helped me get where I am. Yep. Um, and I think about sport, I think about sport and young people. Um, mm. It's a good vehicle for young people, but I feel like the key influences are really important in their journey in sport. And things have changed, generations have changed, and I feel like our key influences need to understand how children and young people think now and that it's not okay to adopt some of the coaching practices we had many years ago mm. when I was playing. Um, yep. There are different ways of doing things. And mm. one of the key mm. things I believe in is, look, you know, if you provide that positive environment, that meaningful environment, and you care as a coach or as an administrator or even as a sport parent, <laughs> then, you know, sport will, you know, will, will get, you know, kids will not you know, fall out of sport a lot earlier than they have been because a lot of the barriers are, you know, the coach who's the, the, the driven, hard-driven person who's authoritarian mm. or it's the parent who's yelling at them in the car when they're going home because they didn't do something, you know, on the court or it's the parent who's at, watching their son at the game who's yelling from the stand and the kid's sitting in the timeout thinking, that's my dad and I'm so embarrassed and I don't know whether I want to play this sport anymore. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's, the yeah, you, the yeah. <laughs> See, I think about that. I think about my mum who used to do that to me. I, 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 I had a thick skin, so you know. I, yeah. But some our kids now, they're not like that. They're not. Yeah. As, you know, they're, mm. they're, it's, it, some are and some aren't. Yeah. And then, yeah, you know, what what's the effect of that on the child who wants to play and then mm -hmm. doesn't want to play sport mm -hmm. anymore? So I feel like yeah. in the sport area, you know, as key influences, coach, parent. Um, um, administrators, we have a lot to, to, to work on to ensure that you know, kids are safe and they enjoy that experience at sport um, that continues them to be a sport lover for life. You know, that's what we want. You know, when, you know, at the age of 30, they still love sport and they still mm. want to be engaged. And then they can, that resonates with their children when they come through. It's, it's sort of a really changing of the guard, changing of perspective and breaking the, the old cycle that as parents we used to have, you know. I certainly do that with my nine year old, you know, I, mm -hmm. you know, she came home last year and said to me, oh, I'm playing sport this year. And I said, fantastic, what are you playing? And she said, oh, basketball and football. And I said, awesome, that's, that's great. 
she never, as an eight-year-old, the first time she's ever played sport. Mm-hmm. And then she proceeded to say, oh, and I said, oh, who's coaching your team? I said, is, you've got to, is it cool? And she goes, no, Dad, I volunteered you. <laughs> <laughs> My dad will do it. <laughs> so this is, this is the example. I just said, okay, all right, mm-hmm. yep. I got it, I got it. And, you know, you know, my role was with Basel Zoom was to develop the Kiwi Hoops curriculum, which is for coaching kids at that age. So yeah. all I did was adapt Beautiful. what I had developed and, and coach the kids, and, and the kids loved it. You know, oh, awesome. there's no point. I had a meeting with the parents in the first week and said, right, your child's playing basketball. There are only two things I want to achieve at the end of this year, and that is the kids have a good time, they enjoy and have fun. And the second thing is that you guys support them. Mm-hmm. in their journey so it's important mm-hmm. that you guys everything's positive regardless of whatever the result is in yeah it. and i can say for me it was um really i i, I felt a privilege coaching my daughter's you know eight year five team mm-hmm. like eight year old mm-hmm. and i just kept subbing them in and out didn't care about the score we got hammered every week but there were some real golden moments and one mm-hmm. of those golden moments was um yeah, one time, um, you know, it would have been the third term. So the kids had been playing for, my daughter had been playing for a term and a half, and she hadn't scored a basket. But she scored a basket in this game. Wow. And the look on her face was gold. <laughs> she just turned around mm. and was like running down the court. <laughs> and then, you know, I said to my wife after the game, I said, that's why we do it. It's, it's moments like this. That's all that yeah. matters to me. I don't care. You know, even with the other kids, when they scored their first basket, we're just like, yeah, that's the moment of goal. You know, you think about those kids in that moment when they had that, that was just, that just, just resonated. And for me, you know, they came off and I was like, yeah, you know, <laughs> high fiving. There's no negativity. The kids all get the same amount of time. You know, it's just, it was um, refreshing. And sometimes people ask me, who's, what's the master coach? Mm. How do you define a master coach? I've had that question. I said, the master coach for me is a guy or a female who can coach at the highest level, but then can come back down and coach mm. a year one, year two team, year three team, and have the same significant effect on those athletes and those participants mm. as they would at this level and can really adapt their coaching to the level that they're at. So I guess, well, those, oh, I don't know if those are beautiful. three things, but I, I guess those are the things for me, um, that are that are very really important. Um, awesome. One of the other things that that I really value is um, is that I have four daughters. I don't have sons. I have four daughters, and I'm a real advocate for for um, for you know supporting female sport, um, for forty, mm. supporting females in sport, right. and growing the game at that level because that's really missing um you know if i look at it i say yep the men's game is totally different from the women's game both in, in every sport the women's yeah. game is so under resourced but they have a talent and you know and i and i believe in that i believe that we we, we need to support the female game so when mm-hmm. i say we're supporting basketball i'm supporting basketball not only in the male space but in the female, female space, space as well we want the we want awesome. the game to grow and uh, we want the same opportunities that females have in the junior space, um, it's a little bit different in the national NBL side, but things are changing. You know, the women's league is going to be televised. It looks like things are changing, and that's fantastic. There's a bit, mm-hmm. of, and a bit more resource there for women, and that's great. But it's only very minor compared to the males. The males, I say yeah. Because I'm involved with four, four, four daughters, and they love sport, and you know, it's 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 um, endearing to hear. Their, their, their perspective on what they think about female sport mm. and the challenges they've had in you know, my adult daughters the challenges they've had when they were playing sport and the barriers yeah. and why they didn't mm. really continue to play sport so it's really searching you know for the powers that be sport new zealand and all the other sports in so is working on how can they make it better for females and challenging those norms and and also trying to remove some of those barriers from female sport and make it better mm. so, Awesome. Yeah. beautiful thank you for sharing uh, well, that no, too. that's that's what yeah appreciate oh. yeah yeah appreciate that and uh, joe <laughs> as we start to wrap up coach again <clears throat> thank you so much for your time um joe is there any final thoughts comments that that you'd like to add yes i share? would one is um well a few things just want to acknowledge and thank you coach natu for your time for your openness and for 
the massive amount of information that you've shared with us. I've mm. really taken a lot. I um, have been scribbling down quite a fair bit on my pages, <laughs> as, uh, trying to keep up with, with the things that you were speaking about. But it also gave me. That's why I had a. That's why I've still got a bunch of other questions. But perhaps we could meet with you another time. But oh, mate, I really love yeah. what you're doing. Love the way that you communicate and the way that you're invested in developing your people and your team. And it's obvious that. Um, I can see why those families and that felt that their their children are in good hands with the PB Jets. So thank you very much for that. We look forward to supporting you guys and your team on your um, season, this, this coming season, yeah. and looking forward to uh, seeing how everything plays out. I'm, I'm really stoked and it was really nice to hear that the other teams won't be able to cut any film of you and your coaching because yeah, there's, nah, there's none yeah. of it have been around for the last few yeah. years. So yeah, that's yeah. in itself yeah. is pretty exciting, but really appreciate your time, brother. And uh, we'd love to, if at some stage, at some point, it would be great to um, not only reconnect with yourself, but also maybe if some of the players might be interested in opening and speaking with us, we'd love to chat with them as well to hear about oh, their experiences yes. and the things that they could share as well. Um, so thank you very much, brother. We wish you every success for this season. We're going to be supporting and watching along and seeing what the results are and uh, look forward to supporting you as best we can on, on your guys' journey. So thank you again, Coach. Hey, hey. Awesome. Um, thank you very much. And... Oh, sorry, Coach, and yeah, yeah. Uh, just to um, uh, tātoko, um, exactly what Joe said, um, a big um, tawhatai tele lava to you, Coach, mm -hmm. for being here and being on um, on this pod and sharing the, the wealth of information and experience. I'll tell you all, we've heard a history lesson. We've heard the names of the legends in the game, mm. and it's safe to say that Coach Natu is a legend. But he has still more to give. Mm -hmm. And it's not just about being a legend yeah. um, in the past. It's he's still creating in the present. So the things that you've listened to, the things that you've heard, these things resonate not only in the sport of basketball, but for any sport, for any activity, any business adventure, any idea, any thought, your families, your communities. These things are all about people. I love the fact you talked about culture. I love mm -hmm. the fact that you talked about humans and people and bring it all together. The sport is the vehicle, but the people drive that vehicle. So without further ado, you've heard an awesome podcast. Stay tuned, listen to more, because we'll have Coach N on at a future stage. Yes. So without further ado, Aotearoa, as we normally say at the end of these podcasts, let's go. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> Thanks, Coach. Um, yeah. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. If you enjoyed it, would you mind doing us a favour and letting us know via the comments in our YouTube channel or by emailing us at either joe at epicpodcast.co.nz or brian at epicpodcast.co.nz That's E-P-I-C-H podcast.co.nz We'd really love to hear from you so that we can continue to strive to deliver content worthy of your time. If you'd like to support us further, we invite you to consider liking and subscribing to us and hitting that notification bell on YouTube so that you can stay up to date with all the latest episodes as they drop. We also invite you to consider following us on Instagram, Facebook and LinkedIn. Just type in Epic Aotearoa. That's A-O-T-E-A-R-O-A. -A -A. Regardless of your decision, we appreciate your time once again and wish you every success as you continue to work towards creating a better future. Let's go.